Hello and welcome. My name is Peyting Lian. I am a clinical specialist at the Johns Hopkins Hospital, and I am currently the Sheikh Khalifa Stroke Institute Outpatient Program Manager. Today, I will share with you about the implementation of a unified model for stroke recovery and rehabilitation, a concept that was initially presented by Dr. Raghavan to start off the webinar series. In this presentation, I hope to demonstrate the translation and implementation of a unified stroke rehabilitation model that challenges the current model of stroke care. I will also share with you the challenges and lessons we learned during this process, as well as our future plans moving forward. As Dr. Raghavan has presented in her lecture, we can see that the focus historically has been on triage of patients and how to move them through the continuum of care instead of recovery, because the length of stay usually dictates how long a patient stays within each setting. Oftentimes, patients are transitioned to the next level of care before they are really ready. This can be to a home or to a facility. As a result, patients coming through to outpatient can still be significantly impaired. To illustrate how this system focused on transition through care and triage versus recovery, meet Mr. B. Mr. B is a 57-year-old male who suffered from a lacunar infarct back in September of 2019. This resulted in a right spastic hemiplegia, expressive aphasia and dysphagia, and is wheelchair and bed bound. Mr. B also has poor controlled type 2 diabetes and hypertension, as well as chronic kidney disease. Prior to his stroke, he was working, living alone, and was independent. For the course of his stroke, he was initially hospitalized and then transferred to a subacute facility and then to a long-term nursing home. Sadly, he was readmitted back to the hospital due to a hypertensive crisis in January of 2020, just three months after his stroke. It is cases like Mr. B that made us ask, could we have done better? In order to shift from the current care focusing on mainly moving patients along the continuum of care versus recovery, we needed a new model of care for recovery and rehabilitation. Each circle highlights the crucial components of this new model. This includes the integration of care across levels, build an outcome database, develop algorithms for precision medicine rehabilitation, disseminate through a learning network, as well as demonstration of effectiveness of this model. Today, I will focus and highlight on the blue portion of these components as we implement this into our care. First, we had to identify what are the existing challenges and gaps to achieving our proposed new model of care. These challenges can be categorized into operational challenges, challenges in establishing consistent outcome assessments across each setting, and challenges to establishing treatment approach consistency. Ultimately, the implementation process needed to be fluid and adaptable as this process continues to evolve. Some operational challenges included siloed care, patients lost in transition, dosing and timing of neurorehabilitation, as well as staffing. Outcome assessment challenges included different outcomes collected within each setting, the timing of outcomes, and the documentation of the outcomes. Education treatment approach challenges included the communication and consistency of care amongst therapist team and care team. First, we needed to address the operational challenges. In order to create a programming consistent across the continuum 
for a unified model of care. How treatment and care were more siloed between each care setting was the first challenge to overcome. We needed to ensure there was more consistent communication between the care settings to prevent any patients loss during the transition of their care. This would allow for more seamless handoff of patients. For example, Mr. B did not receive much therapy after the initial onset of his stroke to address his impairment or comorbidities. Unfortunately, this meant very poor consistency in the management of his blood pressure and diabetes and therapy. As a result, he was readmitted to the hospital due to a hypertensive event and remained to be wheelchair bound with maximal assistance needed for self-care. With his 2020 hospital course, after a mission at Hopkins, he received care to meet his medical and therapy needs as each team helped to transition him through the continuum of care. Besides the patients moving through the continuum of care from inpatient, we also have patients needing access from home health and within the community or from outside providers that we need to consider for our workflow. Here is an overview of our referral sources and how we have come up to triage patients into the frequency of care they need. Just as dynamic are the needs of patients in the process of their recovery journey, we wanted to create a clinical design that meets that specific need. As a result, these paths are created to allow patients to transition through based on how they're presenting at the time clinically. What is unique about our emerging model is the customization of outpatient recovery to the individual patient's needs. We are moving away from the standard two times a week because that is what we've always done or that is what staff and scheduling allows, but instead towards precision medicine with the different paths at the various frequency of care. To allow for better handoff of patients, we created an inpatient to outpatient discharge algorithm. It was created to assist in determining the dosing of intervention that is appropriate to fit the patient's needs. This algorithm is to allow the team from acute care units to communicate to outpatient prior to time of discharge to allow for better planning and access to outpatient services. This algorithm is designed to identify lower level patients that will require and benefit from high or moderate frequency of visits in outpatient. The inpatient rehab team discussed the appropriateness of the patients during their team stroke huddle. In order to create appropriate access in a timely fashion, key roles were created to assist in solving our access challenges. We also had to change how we schedule these patients to ensure consistent and continuity of care. Each roles created included a stroke navigator for outpatient access coordination, where inpatient care team notifies the navigator of all the potential discharges needing outpatient care. She will then facilitate the scheduling of these patients to the necessary paths. She also works closely with the transition guide as patients may be transitioned to home services first before ready to come to outpatient. In our clinical design, we have allocated set blocks of time to schedule the patients according to these treatment frequencies. We have also established teams to continue the care of the patients as they progress through their recovery journey, so there is consistency in treating therapists. In summary, for the operational challenges and solutions, we had to create and establish a workflow for access. We needed to establish communication across the continuum and therapists no longer work in a framework of siloed construct, so patients are not lost in the transition of care. Our next challenge revolves around outcome assessments, where we need to establish a set of standardized outcome measures that is used across the continuum of care as well as build an outcomes database. 
As I introduced to you, Mr. B, earlier, Mr. B has now completed the Path A segment of his care, where he received 18 sessions per discipline in four weeks. How do we know if this is better than the standard of care? And how do we know if he is ready to move on to the next path in, Claire, in care? One way is to use the standardized outcomes as metrics to know. Each team from their respected setting needed to agree with the same set of standardized outcome measures. Considerations for the outcome measures included the need to capture the domains of impairment, function, and participation within each specific settings. These outcome measures also needed to be captured in a timely fashion that matches the practice guidelines for each discipline. This timeline needed to be balanced with the need to capture data, yet not overcollect, which would then interfere with therapy sessions. The timing of the rollouts of the outcomes was not synchronized across the, the continuum, which caused some confusion. As a solution, routine meetings were scheduled as regular touch points. Great considerations for the documentation burden warranted teaming up with our electronic medical record design team to consolidate all outcomes in a bundle for a quick access when documenting. And after much deliberation amongst the clinical specialists represented from each discipline and team across the continuum of care, these are the set outcome measures we have agreed to capture as a patient's transition through their care. With our clinical design established with the different paths for intervention frequency and patients moving between each therapy paths based on their needs at the time of presentation, we needed to set the time frame of when to reassess patients in order to capture change and to further establish their plan of care. We needed to consider the feasibility of how often we'd like to capture these outcomes to not only to inform care, but also to consider the balance of assessing versus treating and potential documentation burden on staff. In the US, according to Medicare guidelines, we have two time points we needed to adhere. We layer these requirements to how we establish the frequency of when to assess and reassess. As it is a slight change to our standard workflow, we problem solved to create handrails for patients to minimize confusion that included bi-monthly team huddles and visual reminders. And finally, the education challenge, the need to create a learning network to disseminate this unified model of care focused on recovery. This is with two groups of targeted audiences, therapist competency and patient competency. We needed to ensure all therapists are competent in administering the selected outcome measures. This included lunchtime meetings with in-person lunch and learns, Zoom meetings, and videos for staff to access in their own time. Competency assessments were also created to ensure consistency of administration of the selected outcomes. Established monthly audits were also put in place to ensure the carryover with the proposed workflow and integration of the outcomes into therapists' current practice. The other component we needed to address was patient competency, where there is carryover of therapy sessions into home and later transition into the community upon discharge. As a team, we recognize that the recovery journey may be long for some. So throughout the continuum of care, we wanted the patient and caregivers to be confident in carrying over the skills they have acquired during their therapy sessions. As you can see in the graphic illustration, at the start of therapy, therapists do a lot more in preparation for the patients, so they will be able to do more at the end of therapy sessions. One of the strategies the team thought up 
was a home exercise kit. These specific kits were initially created for the purpose of patient care in the telehealth setting over the pandemic lockdown timeframe. As clinics have reopened, these kits have been adapted and integrated to patients' home exercise program in preparation for transition to self-management and discharge. Each kit has specific instructions for the patient and caregiver guided by the therapist. This is to ensure carryover of the gains made in therapy to continue upon discharge. In summary, the Stroke Institute's model of care for recovery and rehabilitation stemmed from the needs of patients and clinicians to provide better care for patients like Mr. B. We needed to establish a foundation that included integration of care across levels, build an outcome database, and to disseminate information through a learning network. The future plans for the Stroke Institute is to further develop an algorithm for precision medicine, further build our outcome database, as well as demonstrate the effectiveness of this model of care for recovery and rehabilitation. In order to implement this model, it is only possible from the colossal team efforts from everyone involved. This includes each clinical team of their respected practice settings and the tremendous support from the leadership team as well as faculty and administrative staff. As always, we are grateful for our patients that provide us with invaluable feedback. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions, and or comments, please feel free to email me.